Welcome. Uh, opening the meeting Monday, May 15, 2017. This is the uh, Joint City Council and Planning Commission Parking Workshop. Thank you all for coming out. We really appreciate it. Your input is always valuable to us. So the first thing we do is call to order. So Ms. Ogan, if you would please uh, do the roll call. Um, could I just say that all council members and planning commission members are in attendance? Thank you. Okay, we will start with the Pledge of Allegiance and Councilman Vizorek will lead us in that. Good evening, would you please rise, face the colors, place your right hand over your heart. Ready, begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, do, uh, do we have any public comments before we start? We've done the pledge, we have the welcome. So any person who wishes to, oh, thank you. Anybody who wants to address us, this is the time here for the public comments. And uh, you can speak to anything that's on our agenda, which is the citywide parking workshop. Not on the agenda. I'm sorry? Yes, okay, so right now you can speak to uh, any item not on the agenda. I am corrected here. Uh, there's a form request to speak, so if you would just turn it into, where do you want, where do you want it turned into? Back of the table, Shana. Okay, back of the table there. Uh, the completed form, uh, give it to uh, Shana there in the back of the table. And uh, then we will call you up in order and give you your time to speak. So in order, because it's a big meeting, in order that we have a timely meeting, we ask that you limit your comments, please, to three minutes per person, and um, that you maintain a civility to you. <laughs> and we, we here will give you that same courtesy. State law prohibits us up here from talking about anything that's not on the agenda. So if we don't respond to your comment or we don't engage in a discussion, it's not that we're ignoring you, it's not that we don't think your comment is important, it's that we are not allowed by state law to discuss it or comment on it. If you uh, have any handouts that you wanna distribute to the council or to the planning commission, um, please hand them with your speaker uh, request form and they will be distributed to us. Thank you. Okay. I have some requests to speak. So first, Matt Davenport, then Larry Robinson, and then Jim Kelly. So first, please, uh, Matt Davenport, if you'd come up to the lectern here, state your name and where you live. Okay. Not your address, just your city. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Somehow I knew I was going to go first, hoping I was going second. But uh, yeah, Matt Davenport. Um, we, uh, I'm a property owner and business owner in the Doheny Village as of, what, a little bit under a year. Um, and so right off there in Santa Rosa. And primarily the reason I wanted to say a few words was simply to express gratitude to the council and everybody doing the hard work to improve the city. Um, I know Capo Beach, that Doheny Village is a vital part of that. And simply just wanted to represent um, the business owners there and excited about the potential that's created in that area. It's got a lot of great history, a lot of talented people there. So just wanted to encourage any sort of measured approach to improving that area because it's a really high potential area. That's it. Well, thank you, thank you very much. Are you, uh, you didn't state your resident. You resident at Dana Point? Yes. 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 Sorry. So Resident. that's okay. We just need that for our record. Uh, okay. Thank you. Thank you very much for coming and for taking the time to comment. Thank you. Okay. Next is Larry Robinson. Welcome. Yes, honorable mayor and council members. My name is Larry Robinson. I am a 30 year, I can't believe it, August, I'll be 30 years here in Capistrano Beach. 
general contractor, done a lot of work with school districts and this, that, and the other. And I have, over the last 30 years, seen the ups and downs in terms of the interests of Doheny Village. And sadly, just calling a spade a spade, we kind of feel that in the past, up until now, we're kind of the backwater barrio of Dana Point. And uh, quite frankly, we have felt quite neglected over the years. I'm looking in the audience for some of my fellow business associates in Doheny Village. I don't see them here. Many of the reasons that they're not here is they feel that their voice has not been heard. Not that they haven't tried, but they have been through a number of attempts to share their thoughts to no avail. So I just want to thank the council to uh, you know, take this opportunity to bring our interests in the Doheny Village area to the forefront. There's a lot of work that has been done in the past. Very important to take a very measured approach going forward because there have been some lessons learned. I'll just say that. And so uh, thank you. I appreciate all the efforts that have been taken. Thank you. Thank you very much. Just want you to know that we up here see Dana Point as one Dana Point. So want that. Want you to feel good about that. Okay, Jim Kelly. Welcome. Welcome. Good evening, everybody. My name is Jim Kelly. I'm a 25-year resident of Dana Point. I like to address empty lots in Dana Point. I'd like to suggest that City Council tasks staff to proactively, proactively contact developers and empty lot owners for a shared public-private use of their lots. They can begin a dialogue and a discussion and exchange of ideas. It's not going down there and just say, hey, can we do this? It's working with them, taking some of their ideas, working with them back and forth to use these empty lots as perhaps a development for a parking structure or parking lot. It, we don't have to have all the ideas. The owners themselves will have ideas and the developers will have ideas. I think time is of the essence in the sense of the case of uh, Green Tree because they're already breaking ground for uh, parking structures subterranean and we could maybe work with them in a shared public private use. So again, I'd like to have city council and, the, and staff uh, get on top of it quickly and be proactive about it rather than wait for somebody to throw an idea over the wall. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's all the public comments that I have at this point. Is there, if there's anyone else who wants to speak, now is the time. Okay, having no more, then I will close the public comment portion of it and go on to the one and only item on our agenda, the new business, the citywide parking workshop. So I will ask staff now for a staff report, please. Thank you, Madam Mayor, members of the City Council, Planning Commissioners, thank you for being here this evening, and members of the public, thank you for attending. Uh, I'd like to start by giving a little bit of background and setting some expectations for this evening's workshop. It's important for us all to recognize that we're not going to be able to identify and address all of the city's parking concerns in one workshop tonight. Rather, the City Council uh, directed staff to start this process and engage in conversations with the community um, and we are here to understand the community's concerns and ideas to address parking within the city of Dana Point. The primary goal for tonight's workshop is to gather in concerns and ideas from the community related to parking. We have put together a number of interactive workstations. We will explain in more detail in a little bit what the process is um, for each of those workstations. The city's retained Dr. Rick Wilson, he's a professor at Cal Poly Pomona, to facilitate this exercise this today. He is going to help guide the city's broader parking conversation. Dr. Wilson has already had the opportunity to address uh, planning commissioners and city council members in some pre-meetings uh, to hear what their concerns and ideas were to help focus the workshop's topics for this evening. All of the concerns and ideas, information gathered here tonight will be compiled and posted on the city website and provided to Dr. Wilson so he can prepare a report to the Planning Commission and City Council 
detailing the concerns and ideas raised and outlining some options and recommendations for the city for the planning commission and city council to consider moving forward we anticipate dr wilson's report to go to the planning commission where they will get to weigh in on some of those recommendations and then we will take that to the city council at a separate meeting and we're anticipating this to occur in late june early july we will notify the community in advance of these meetings and encourage all participating this evening to attend those meetings as well so with that, I'd like to introduce Dr. Wilson, who will give a brief presentation, and then uh, we'll have an introduction of staff to go over the different stations. Welcome. Thank you for being here. Thank you for having me. I'm going to stand over here if it's OK. Um, I'm Delighted to be here to be able to share some ideas about parking and parking management with you. My presentation is going to be short because the main purpose tonight is to hear from you and I'm really looking forward to circulating around between all these tables and hearing your perceptions about what's going on with parking and what ideas are for making parking work better. Um, I'm, uh, as mentioned, I'm a professor at Cal Poly Pomona and I've been studying parking for a long time working with a lot of communities across the West and Southern California. Um, I've written a couple books about it that are at that table over there if you'd like to have a look. Um, and I'm delighted to meet with communities and help them figure out what, how to take the next steps to improve their parking situation. So um, I'd like to start with the future. Uh, I think we need to th think about all the changes that are, oh, by the way, excuse me. You do have, this screen is kind of small, in your packet you do have all the slides, so if it's easier for you to flip along with me, um, that might make it a little bit, e little bit easier for you. So, oh, better not do that. Okay. Back to the future. Um, we know about shared mobility services like Uber and Lyft. Uh, there's a lot of change going on in the transportation world. Um, we hear a lot about autonomous vehicles, and before they're driving themselves, they may be parking themselves, which has implications for parking. Um, there's a lot of new parking management technology where people get real-time guidance to an available space instead of having to drive around in circles looking for a space. And finally, there's economic changes. The baby boomer cohort, of which I'm a member, is aging, and at some point we'll be looking to options um, to driving and parking. So when we think about parking and parking structures and parking lots, um, they last a long time and we need to make sure that's fitting our future vision in the community. Here's a couple images. Here's a self-driving Uber vehicle being uh, tested in Pittsburgh. This is not a parking structure I recommend for your community, but I've got it here because it's an interesting one in that it's designed as a multi-purpose facility. The person that built it lives in the top. It's got retail on the third floor. It's got high stories that means it's used for weddings and concerts. So it's the idea of thinking of parking, instead of just having one use and being stuck with that use, that the use of this building may change over time as parking needs change. And finally, this is downtown Los Angeles in front of the Grand Central Market. And this is where the city of Los Angeles wants to build a streetcar. And so what they did as a temporary measure is take the curb parking away and created a pedestrian, well, a, an eating space, and really repurposed the curb parking for another use. So there's a lot of change going on, a lot of new thinking about parking, and these, are, these images uh, represent some of that. But getting back to the present, the way I explain my analysis of parking is often parking is the tail that wags the dog of transportation planning. We discover an issue when we think of parking first and solve parking rather than solve connecting people to the places they want to go. So this is a very complicated chart with a simple message. We should think through other ways of connecting people with places through our land use planning uh, to make places walkable, um, using telecommunications, and then within parking, manage the parking we have as best we can uh, to make sure that we really use all the parking that we have. So the common questions I hear in communities across California 
are how satisfied are the people who park, the businesses and the residents with the parking situation, is the existing parking supply well managed? And what I mean by that is if a parking space is sitting empty most of the time, it's not doing as much good as if it was being used more of the time. Um, are the parking practices supporting economic development, sustainability, and placemaking? Parking and placemaking, in other words, making places that are enjoyable to walk, uh, sometimes are in conflict. And finally, thinking about the role of the city, uh, the business community, uh, developers, residents in parking. So the cities that are doing this well have a more integrated approach with all those uh, players. So this is an image of uh, the Ontario Mills Mall near Cal Poly Pomona where I teach. And this is uh, an example of the kind of urban form that results from single-use parking. There's a shopping mall, there's an arena, each one is set in the middle of a big parking lot uh, that's got as much parking as it will ever need. And the criticism is, in the whole, there's way too much parking for any one period in time. And so this is a, an environment where it's not very pleasant to walk, it's not very livable, it's really a drive-first kind of environment. So this kind of environment produces issues with land use and issues with walkability. This is a city of about 30,000, the city of South Pasadena in LA County, and this looks much more friendly, buildings up to the street, it's a very walkable place. But in this case, they found out that their parking requirements were an impediment to economic development. In other words, in historic buildings, people who wanted to open restaurants could not find the spaces to meet the parking requirement on their private land because there, there wasn't any. The building really went to the edges of the property. And this is a location where they changed that rule and spurred the development of more restaurants. So part of my work is the thing that tells developers how much parking to provide is the zoning code, which is the rules of the game for development. And so one issue is how much parking should new development be required to provide. Cities set a minimum amount. Uh, developers can build more than the minimum in most cases, but it's a base level. So that's a question that's come up in the city of Dana Point. I won't go over this, but there is a way to figure out the right amount of parking that involves thinking about the future and thinking about whether you're gonna have shuttles and thinking about whether you're going to share parking with other uses. So I'm proposing a, an analytical process for figuring out the answer to that question, how much. But fundamentally, it's a policy question. It's not a technical question as much as what are the community's goals and objectives and how does the parking requirement support that. Mostly what I want to discuss with you is parking management. And that's the idea of how do we make parking work as well as it can. So here's a parking space. And that could be a space that is hardly ever used. Sometimes I go to the top of a parking structure and I notice there's not a single oil drip because almost no one parks at the top of the structure. Or a, a space could be used simply for storing cars. Somebody's got an extra car and they're parking be and they're using a parking space hanging onto that car. Or a parking space, the same size space, could be serving 15 people a day in your commercial district. Shoppers, residents, restaurant goers, and so on. So it's the same parking space, but the value of it can be much different. So what does parking management do? It helps use the existing parking better. It can definitely help manage special event parking issues that you may have. And it reduces negative impacts such as people driving around and around looking for a parking space. That just adds to traffic and it can be a hazard for pedestrians and cyclists. So uh, I think parking management is a key tool that cities uh, use to accomplish their goals. And that there is a difference between a lack of parking in actuality and a lack of information coordination and management. Sometimes when people think there's a lack of parking, it's really a management issue can solve it. So part of this relates to your vision for Dana Point. 
And what I've noticed in talking to many communities is there's often a tension about what that vision is. Um, one vision of parking in a small town is it's free, you park in front of the hardware store, um, you don't have to pay, you don't have to walk from your car to your destination. In a big city, people don't generally park where they, they're going, they park a block away, they pay to park, it's a much different urban situation. Neither of these are right or wrong. The question is, what's the vision for Dana Point? Is it a small town vision? Is it a big city vision? Or is it somewhere in the middle? And what is the sweet spot in parking management for Dana Point, for your community values? Now, there's a lot of exciting new parking management tools. Uh, signage, little lights that say when a parking space is open, parking payment machines, pay by credit card, pay by cell phone, a whole host of tools. So there's no shortage of things to manage parking with. The problem is they're often done on an ad hoc basis, not well coordinated. So the private and the public parking aren't on the same page, perhaps. Or the on and off street parking isn't coordinated. And I use the term set it to f and forget it to explain how some communities kind of set a set of parking rules and then just leave it alone. And really they should be thinking about changing it and monitoring it over time. So this is a famous chicken rotisserie cooker from an infomercial from the 1970s. Uh, where he would lead the crowd and they would say, set it and forget it, right? So I'm saying don't set it and forget it for parking management. And the next image I have is a more extreme example of this. This parking sign has been here so long a tree grew around it, okay? So that really is setting it and forgetting it. But it gets worse. Some parking management is ridiculous. Here is a parking sign totem pole from Culver City, California. Eight feet high of various parking rules and regulations. The only thing you know for sure when you see that sign is you're going to get a ticket for something, right? So uh, actually this went up and I was writing the book. I said I got to get out to take a picture of this sign and people started blogging about it and the city found out about people were teasing the city for this ridiculous sign, so they took down half of them, but still it looked pretty silly because the rest of the pole was still there. But, uh, so parking management isn't creating a set of gotcha rules that are so complicated no one can understand and end up just producing tickets. That's not the idea. So what parking does, is management does, is increase the t percentage of time a parking space is used makes it easier to find a space, gives the consumer choice, uh, do I want to pay a little more and park in front of my destination? Do I want to park for free and walk a block? Um, and allows repurposing parking to better uses like I showed you in, in Los Angeles. So the big circle is how much parking, generally stakeholders often think, this is how much we need for economic success in our community. And with um, measures like using shuttles and transit and walking and biking and so on, you can make that circle a little smaller. And by better using the parking you can have, you can make it even smaller. So sometimes it's the little amount, this little circle is how much parking is really needed, but the perception is, because you can't find a space where you want it, there's not enough parking in my town. So there's a lot of tools to use on, for the parking at the curb on street and off street. And I, I think it's best just to talk about those one-on-one -on -one as we go around to the stations. But the question for parking management is putting together a package of tools that works for your community. It's really good to coordinate the on and off street parking. And you're already doing this in Dana Point by the city is leasing private parking for public parking purposes in the Lantern District. It's great to coordinate within city departments with private sector landowners and businesses and chambers of commerce can play a big role in moving parking management ahead. Shared parking is a great idea. Some uses use their parking during the day. 
others use it at night. If you can coordinate those two uses, you can get more effectiveness out of a given parking space. And many communities are moving towards charging for parking in the best spaces, the most desirable spaces. A lot of communities had parking meters and took them out when malls were competing with downtowns. And the idea was, if the mall offers free parking, we must also offer it. But the times really have changed and people are seeking out downtowns more than malls and businesses have found that charging for parking actually makes the district more convenient for people that visit it. It doesn't actually chase them away. This is the old Pasadena uh, where they instituted parking charges and shared parking. And when you put your money in the meter, it tells you what they do with the money. The money goes right back into Old Pasadena for safety, street cleaning, alley improvements, and so on. So there's a direct benefit back from those parking charges. So Ventura, for example, has a mix of charge parking charges and free parking. So people going to downtown Ventura have a choice which one they want. Um, Laguna Beach is using off-site parking for their festival season with a shuttle, a way of dealing with that summertime crunch that you, you have as well, I think. Um, Redwood City is in the south of the Bay Area and it's using differential prices to try and get the most use out of its parking. Tacoma, Washington has built an integrated system where public and private parking is coordinated. And Old Pasadena I've mentioned. Um, so, I think because parking management is changeable, you can try things and experiment with them and do pilot projects and make adjustments. So I say don't let the perfect be the enemy of the good. Um, the things communities can try and do are promoting walking, biking, and transit. Making sure their parking requirements and their zoning code are working for them introducing or adjusting the on-street time limits to make sure it's producing turnover in the best spaces, um, leasing unused spaces for public parking, which you're already doing, coordinating shared parking across different property owners, and considering paid parking in the areas that are the most full. So um, some of you have filled out a survey, and there's the survey is going to be still open till the end of the month, and there's uh, lap t uh, iPads over there where you can do it here at the workshop. So this isn't completed, but I, want to, I took a look at the survey results so far, and I wanted to show you some of the things I took away from it. Here's where I found agreement. The solutions have to fit Dana Point. That a main street walkable environment is preferred over a strip mall type setting and that special events create parking challenges in the community. I found quite a few people agreeing with the following things. Uh, improvements to parking, landscaping parking lots, improving pedestrian safety in the parking lots and in crossing streets, reducing speeding on local streets and reducing neighborhood disruption. Providing public parking in commercial areas. Uh, considering, at least, time limits in some commercial areas. Improving signage and increased, increasing awareness of the public parking the city does have. And reviewing parking rules in residential areas and then enforcing the rules that the city agrees upon. So those are some of the things I saw agreement in the surveys. And I think were areas where there needs to be some more work to get agreement is whether there's a parking problem and where it is and exactly what its nature is. Um, which kind of parking experience is desired and there's a way that you can register your vote on that at the back under parking preferences. You know, whether it's primarily you wanna, you think that you should be parking right in front of the store or you're willing to park your car once and walk a block and go to a couple different destinations. Um, and whether parking should be free. Those are some of the issues that we hope to hear from you, uh, among many others that the staff will, will prompt you on and, and find out how you, how you see them. So in sum, 
this parking thing is kind of a nerdy little issue, right? Except that it's tied to a lot of very important issues. How well the transportation system works, what your development pattern is, economic development, walkability, livability. So I think it's a key policy issue. Um, so you need to make sure your parking requirements fit your community vision, and then consider taking next steps in parking management. And there is a blue handout in your packet that sort of shows different levels of parking management and how you could progress from one level to another. And you can use that sort of as a tool for thinking about what Dana Point's doing now and what it may do in the future. So, thank you very much for your attention. Um, I want to turn it over to Belinda now. If you have questions for me, I will be circulating all night, so I'd be happy to answer them. But Belinda's going to explain how the, how the tables are going to work. Let's go ahead and give Dr. Wilson a, hand of, a round of applause. Good evening, Dana Point. My name is Belinda Dynas. For those of you I have not personally met yet, uh, I am new to city staff and a senior planner here in the Community Development Department. Tonight is about community engagement. We are seeking input from all of you to help refine the city of Dana Point's long-term vision and identify appropriate parking policies to achieve that vision. Our goal here tonight is to collect as much information as possible from each and every one of you. The workshop is divided into five interactive stations, and each of the five stations are set up with a variety of activities, with staff members from the city here to help you. Please refer to the workshop map for your reference. We wanted to offer a variety of ways for the public to communicate so that we as a community can build consensus on parking ideas and strategies moving forward as we plan for, for Dana Point. The five different stations are color-coded and we'll have about an hour, um, uh, 50 minutes to an hour uh, for each of the stations. And please note that you are not obligated to visit uh, each of the stations, but I will give an, uh, a reminder every 10 minutes should you decide to move on to each station. So in the entry corner in yellow, we have the citywide parking station, and I wanted to introduce you to economic development manager Kelly Renders, who will be there to assist in the back corner. With a show of hands, how many of you have taken the online survey? That's great. We've had over 130 individuals so far provide their feedback. And if you haven't already, uh, we have the iPad set up uh, with the online survey so that you can uh, give your direct input. There are also comment cards at that station so that you can indicate your ideas on visioning and connectivity in Dana Point. So citywide parking in yellow, Kelly will be there to assist you. Toward the back in pink, we have the parking preferences station and we have uh, uh, Matt Schneider, the planning manager there to assist in the exercise over there. We will be asking you six different questions and you'll be given a dot sticker for each of those questions and we'll be polling you on your preferences on various topics related to parking. In the orange, also in the back, we have the residential neighborhood section and uh, staff members Rachel Johnson and John Champa will be there to assist. They have uh, three different maps and tables, and the city is divided into three different sections, north of Stonehill, south of Stonehill, and east of San Juan Creek. And so there we're asking the public to answer where are the residential parking hotspots. And so there are the top eight topics that were collected from the survey itself, and there are dot um, stickers uh, indicating those numbers and so you're going to correlate the, what the issue is and then put that directly onto the map um, what that number is and you're welcome to um, add any additional comments on a post-it note and stick that directly onto the map so that you can see collectively how we're um, seeing problem areas and whatnot and how to address those as well. Um, here towards the front in the corner, we have the Lantern District Town Center uh, station. I would like to introduce staff planners, Kurt Nelson and Danny Giometti. 
um, who is on hand to assist. The purpose of the roundtables for Lantern District is to um, identify parking concerns and parking opportunities. And so we'll be engaging in a conversation with the community members about um, identifying ideas and um, trying to gain consensus on ways to move forward in Lantern District. And so we welcome you to um, generate your ideas, your concerns, your comments onto either the, um, the post-it no notes or staff will assist on writing the um, key topics and ideas on the poster boards itself. You're also welcome to write directly onto the poster boards under the two different topics and they'll be able to assist you on that. Similarly for Doheny Village in the front corner, um, Sean Nicholas and Nick Zorns will be there to assist you in the same um, format. It will be a roundtable discussion focusing on um, opportunities and concerns specific to Doheny Village and moving forward with um, the, uh, the Doheny Village plan. Um, please note that um, the city council members and planning commissioners are welcome to participate in the um, activities should they uh, choose to, and please um, feel free to observe and um, listen in the conversations um, uh, of the public as well. Like I had said, I would give a 10 minute reminder to each and every one of you if you'd like to rotate to each of those stations. So at this time, um, if anyone has any questions, uh, about, okay. So um, you are welcome to visit the stations at your convenience. We will reconvene for public comment um, in an hour or so. So if you have any questions, feel free to find me or ask one of the staff. Thank you. I, I have one question before we start on the survey. Is there, an, for those who haven't taken it, I encourage everyone to take it. Do you have an address where people can go and find that survey? Where? Yes, I'll um, have handouts available for that as well. Great, thanks. Okay, so if you have a public comment, again, request to speak. We do have one. Paul Hinman. Where are you, Paul? Hi. Come on up. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. And uh, greetings to the council and the planning commission. I'm, my name is Paul Hinman. I've been a resident of Dana Point for 49 years. Uh, Quite frankly, other than special events, uh, I really haven't had any parking issues in Dana Point. Now, I know some people have, but I uh, don't feel that way. And I want to congratulate you all for having this forum and getting all the input from the public, and you're to be commended for that. Uh, however, uh, there is something that concerns me once the rain tree development is built out, parking in Lantern District will be horrendous. And once people experience that, the results of this workshop may be significantly different if you were to hold it then. So, and I have noticed from postings on the board that other people are expressing concerns about that as well. I just wanted to be sure that any conclusion that you're bringing forward now is taking into account what's going to be the parking situation when Rain Tree is built out. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Okay, one more. Jill Richardson. Welcome. Hello. Thank you. Hello. Ooh. And thank you for having this very important meeting and getting public uh, comments. That is very important. I just wanted to point out um, about completestreets.org. There is a lot of information in regards to that uh, program, and I want to encourage Dana Point to make it a unique place. I feel that bikes need to be encouraged in addition to parking. I feel that mass transportation, particularly involving OCTA, 
having um, extended hours on Fridays, Saturday, and Sundays could help connect. I think the trolleys are wonderful, but really having more means of mass transportation, I think, is what, what I would like to see the uh, city continue to develop and expand. We are at a unique place right now of making Dana Point a destination, and I think no one wants to be in their cars when they're arriving here. So I want to encourage for the planning to have more pathways for walking, having uh, rental bike stations where people can explore and bike, having perhaps, um, uh, I know in Houston they have a lot of uh, bike trolleys, if you will, that you could rent so you, people can get up and down the hill and just make it more green and eco-friendly. I feel that more cars and more parking spots does not make Dana Point a more unique place. Getting people outside to explore by walking and by bikes is really what I was um, in, in encouraging everyone to consider and make that a priority. Thank you. Thank you. Any more comments? Okay. Then I will uh, close the public comment portion of this. Any other business that we need? I just want to say I was asked to introduce myself, so I apologize I didn't do that earlier. You all know me. So for those of you that don't, my name is Ursula Luna Reynosa, and I'm the Community Development Director. I would like to take this opportunity to thank um, the staff that all helped out this evening. Um, there was a lot of input that went into this and I'd like to give a special acknowledgement to Belinda who really took the lead in putting this workshop together. Great job, Belinda. Um, that's all I have, thank you. And again, I just wanna thank everybody who came out and took the time out of their evening to give us information and listen to ideas and give us their ideas. It's very important and thank you again. I'm um, sorry, I did want to mention um, that, again, we will take all of this information and we will distill it into a very user-friendly way, get it on the website, um, but also um, we did want to have this opportunity for the um, City Council and Planning Commissioners, if they had any sort of closing comments, don't feel obligated, but did want you all to have that opportunity think, as well. Uh, Council Member Tomlinson. Yes, I want to thank the community for coming out this evening. It's important that you get your ideas on these boards so they can be distilled. And if there's people you know that weren't able to attend this evening, please encourage them to take the online survey because the more people that we have in putting into our community, the better we're going to understand the whole community. So please encourage your friends to get on there if they weren't able to make it tonight and put in their input into this plan. Thank you. Any other comments before I call for adjournment? Again, thank you. Do I have a uh, motion to adjourn? Yes. Information for the online survey. Uh, there should be some documents back on the table if anybody wants to grab them on their way out. Great. Okay, hearing nothing more, I asking for a motion to adjourn. Do I have one? So moved. Second. Great. We are adjourned. <laughs>